Hello everyone, it seems as if Rare Breed Triggers and Big Daddy Unlimited, the wide open trigger uh, settlement or debacle has finally come to a settlement and it's over. It seems as if Rare Breed and Big Daddy Unlimited have finally made an agreement and Big Daddy Unlimited has admitted that they infringed on the patent and did so knowingly and that they agreed to a settlement which was undisclosed. Now, I'm gonna have some links down in the description that you can read for yourself to read the both the consent, judgment, and permanent injunction exhibit and the joint motion for entry of consent, judgment, and permanent injunction. Now, there's a whole lot in this exhibit one which is claiming just a lot of things. Basically, what this is saying is it's identifying who's involved in the case, being the McKnight's, Big Daddy Limited, Wide Open Triggers, all of the people that were involved, all the people that were directly involved, all the organizations, the companies, that kind of thing. They Then it starts on, there are 25 things that are just stated. Just here are 25 agreements that we agree to. Here are 25 statements of fact. Number 13 is where it gets interesting, where it says ABC is the owner of all right title and interest in the patent number firearms trigger mechanism, the 223 patent. That's how it's referred to in here. Rare Breed holds the exclusive, number 14 says, Rare Breed holds the exclusive license to sell products covered by the 223 patent and has standing to collect damages for lost profits. Line item 15 says, All of the claims in the 223 patent are valid and enforceable. Now keep in mind, these are things that both the plaintiffs and the defendants, being Rare Breed and Big Daddy Unlimited, are both agreeing to as fact. Number 16 is the wide open triggered and the Alamo 15 from Powered by Graves have been accused of infringing on the patent. They're admitting that they've been accused. The parties intend that the issues of infringement, validity, and forcibility are hereby finally concluded and disposed of and that this consent, judgment, and permanent injunction bars the defendants from contending in any action or any any other proceeding that the claims of the 223 patent are invalid, unenforceable, and infringed. So basically it's saying that they cannot get involved in any sort of appeal for any other case. Even if it's not them, they cannot assist any other company. They cannot be involved in any uh, challenges to Rare Breed's ownership or licensing, permanent licensing of this patent. Line item 18 says... Defendants have been making or causing to be made, using or causing to be used, importing, offering to sell, and selling forced reset triggers, the wide open trigger and the Alamo 15, which are covered by one or more of the claims in the 223 patent. Number 19 says, at least one claim of the 223 patent is infringed on by the infringing products sold, offered for sale, or imported by defendants. Now, number 21 says, plaintiffs and defendants have entered into a separate confidential settlement agreement in which they have agreed to terms of compensation for the agreement. Now, it's confidential. I don't know it. I doubt anyone involved would share that information because if they did share that information of the amount of money that... Uh, <laughs> was agreed to or what the settlement agreement was, then they would be uh, in hot water and could potentially have negative ramifications. So if Big Daddy Unlimited shared how much they settled for, uh, they would, they've already admitted that they infringed and they would go back to this judge and that judge would just hammer down on them. Now, if Rare Breed broke their agreement, this would be negative for them as well. So I don't think we're ever going to know the actual number, but I mean, it wouldn't be unreasonable. Let me hear. I, I want to hear what you guys think. How much money do you think they settled for? Big Daddy Unlimited was a pretty big company. They sold a lot of triggers. Rare Breed is obviously spending a ton of money to fight this, so it must be worth it to them. I wouldn't be surprised if it was somewhere in the 50 million plus range, uh, but let me know what you guys think down below about what you think the actual number is could have been. Obviously, it's all speculation. None of us know anything because it's confidential. Nobody knows anything. Now, the big thing to note is the takeaways, I guess. Big Daddy Unlimited is admitting that they produced infringing triggers. They're admitting that they did it multiple times with both companies, and they are agreeing that the McKnight's, anyone involved with them, any other family members, anyone that works for the company, any of the companies, they will not continue to make future products. They will also not ever try to fight this agreement because now the court is essentially going to force them to never do that again because they admitted that what they did was wrong. They came to an agreement. We're never going to know what that agreement is which I guess is unfortunate for some people that need to know the specifics, but a big thing to note for a lot of other companies out there might be this. 
Big Daddy Unlimited was obviously the biggest financial uh, target for Rare Breed. Obviously, they were the biggest company selling the most of these infringing triggers. Rare Breed was able to get them to settle. I don't think other smaller companies are going to be able to fight this and win because they are breaking the rules. Now, this is enforceable until the patent expires, which is going to be quite a long time. This is a sign, or it would be a sign to me if I was one of these companies that was much smaller making infringing triggers to stop um, and not do that anymore. Obviously, a lot of people want more of these things on the market. The thing is, a lot of the competing triggers that I've seen haven't really been cheaper, um, and they probably are not the people that are going to actually fight all the way through and beat the ATF, because Rare Breed is obviously willing to spend a lot of money. I foresee them being the ones that will actually be able to succeed in fighting against the ATF. Having all these smaller companies isn't really increasing the supply all that much, in my opinion, but, you know, whatever. I've never owned one of these triggers. I'm not really super interested in them, mostly just because they don't have a semi-auto, non-forced assist mode. They just have the forced reset mode. And to me, that's not very appealing. Um, but what do I know? I don't like fun, I guess. I, I hate fun. Let me know what you guys think about this down below. You guys know the drill. Have fun, be safe, stay dangerous. Peace.